is more than a vid. Adonai roi lo echsar. Vino peshe yar vid senya me menu chot ya nachaneni. Nahav shi yishavei. Yanachin hi v'magle tzadak l'ma'an shemo. Gam ki heleich v'getzor mavet. Lo irara ki hatai madi. Shiftecha u'mishantecha hema yenach amoni. Ha'aroch l'fanai shulchan. Neged Zorri rai Di shanta Hashem em roshi Kosiri vaya Ach tov achased yirdifoni Kol yamei chayai Veshaveti Bevet aronai L'orech yamin. Friends, I've chanted for you the words of our 23rd song. In these moments when we are feeling in need of comfort and strength, we often turn to the words of the psalmist. And so, if you're familiar with these words, I invite you to join me as we say together, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember him. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember him. In the opening buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember him. In the blueness of sky and in the warmth of summer, we will remember him. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember him. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember him. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember him. And when we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember him. When we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember him. So long as we live, he too will live, for he is now a part of us, as we remember Harvey Horwitz. To his children, to Mike and Dan, also to Carrie and Sharon, to his brother Dennis, his sister-in-law Linda, and to his grandchildren Alex, Rachel, and Danica, to all the members of the family and to so many dear and cherished friends who have come together today. Today we remember, but we also find the strength to celebrate the life of your beloved Harvey. Our sages and their wisdom have taught us that birth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey from childhood to maturity and from youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom. From weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again. From health to sickness and back we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, <coughs> from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude and from pain to compassion, from grief to understanding and from fear to faith from defeat to defeat to defeat until looking backward or ahead we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way but in having made the journey stage by stage a sacred pilgrimage 
Birth is a beginning and death a destination. And life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. Harvey's journey of more than 84 years began here in Cleveland. He was born on August 4th, 1939 to Alex and Ida Horwitz. Harvey and his twin brother, Les, of blessed memory, along with their baby brother, Dennis, grew up on Cleveland's east side. Harvey's journey started in the famed Kinsman neighborhood and his family eventually moved to Cleveland Heights. Now his brother, Dennis, who is not able to be with us in person, Dennis is in California, but he will be watching this service through the Berkowitz Cuban Book Hut's website later, th later today. I had a chance to speak with Dennis and the family and Dennis shared with me that his twin brothers were 11 years his senior. He truly was the baby brother. And when I spoke with Dennis, he shared many beautiful stories, many sweet memories. As we spoke the other day, one of the memories included the address of the family's home in Cleveland Heights. Dennis proudly shared with me they lived at 2180 Oakdale. Dennis remembered a big brother who, in his teen years, would take him around. He looked out for his baby brother. And Harvey shared with me that, and Dennis shared with me that Harvey, who attended Roxborough Junior High School, played on the football team there. Dennis also shared a story with me that demonstrated how Harvey and Les were, well, shall we say, creative in the way they were mischievous. At just seven years young, the twin boys happened to be one day at their grandfather's poultry store, and the two boys, if I understood the story correctly, climbed into their grandfather's delivery truck, one of them turning the steering wheel and the other one working the pedals, they were able to cause some real trouble. <laughs> a little bit older into their early teens, Dennis shared a story about his twin brothers that when they were attending Roxboro Junior High, they decided to put popcorn kernels in the lighting fixtures that were located in the auditorium on a specific day when there was going to be a school assembly. As you can imagine, the lights began to heat up during the assembly and the lighting fixtures began popping the popcorn. <laughs> Dennis shared that his brother attended Cleveland Heights High School until he entered into the workforce. And we know that Harvey also served our country in the United States Army before he returned home to Cleveland where he began working for the Pepsi Company, a company where he remained for nearly a decade. Dennis also remembered a brother who, in Dennis's words, said, always liked to look back and reminisce. He was a good storyteller. And Dennis, as he grew into his adult years, it seemed like the age between his older brothers and Dennis, that gap began to lessen. And for Dennis, a friendship and a bond began to deepen. And Dennis, while we all extend our condolences to you across the miles, we know that these special memory and memories and moments, we hope, we pray that these will always bring you comfort. Harvey met Natalie Stevens as they were fixed up by mutual friends. A courtship began, love blossomed, and the two were married in August of 1962. And when their children, Mike, Dan, and Tammy of blessed memory, when the three of you entered into their world, this Horowitz family portrait became all the more beautiful and complete. Boys, you shared with me that your mom and dad had a good life together. They were blessed with wonderful friends. They enjoyed traveling and visited many places, including Hawaii, parts of Europe, and the Mediterranean. Together, they loved to go on cruises. And Harvey was an avid golfer. Natalie was not, but from time to time, she did enjoy driving the cart for him. I know everyone here has their stories, their special memories about Harvey, and to some people he may have seemed like one who had a bit of a rough exterior. But for those of us who knew him, we knew a man who had a very sweet and soft interior. This place where we are right now, is a place that Harvey, over the last several years, frequented 
regularly. After 46 years of married life with his beloved Natalie, losing her was of course a deep and painful blow. And then the loss of his sweet daughter, Tammy, a loss that can only be indescribable. But Mike and Dan, you told me that dad was out here every week, every week, and he would bring flowers to the cemetery, to this place, and leave them at the sites of his girls. Your dad made his living working for about 30 years with General Video America. And for many of those years, he was side by side with you, Dan. And Dan, when you and Sharon moved down to Florida, he'd enjoy coming down to visit with you, especially would love to go golfing with you. Perhaps a very quick stop at the casino. He had his limit of what he would allow himself to lose. But along the way, Dan, you remember that he would have to stop at every single golf store. And Mike, you and Carrie here in town, you had that extra blessing of being able to be with your dad all the time. Dinners together, watching Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy together, watching the car shows on TV together. Oh, how your dad loved nice cars. There's an inside family joke, which I'm thinking is really not a joke because it's more of a fact. And that is when when your dad would come to visit you and have dinner with you, maybe watch a show with you, he had a limit to the visit. It was a two hour limit. Two hours, that's it. Then it's time for you to leave and go home. Now, I don't think the limit applied though to his friends. Harvey was so fortunate to have many great friends and these buddies meant the world to him. And when your father moved to the lakes of Aurora, you marveled at how he found another wonderful group of friends there as well. He became in his own way, the mayor of Belcourt Lane. <laughs> he would raise the garage door and set up shop. Friends would come by, hang out, just enjoy each other's company. His heart was big and full, full with love for his grandchildren. You know that he adored you. He cared about you. He cared about was interesting to you and the five of you the three of you forgive me had the most special place in his heart your grandfather also had a deep love for animals and he was kind to animals to friends and family and to strangers Harvey was a man who was quite generous there were a number of special causes and charities that meant so much to him he would contribute annually to, we think, 20 to 25 charities each year. And among these, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And because of this, I feel a need to share with you that if anyone is wishing to make a contribution in memory of Harvey, that the family asked that you might consider either St. Jude Children's Research Hospital or perhaps the Gathering Place, two places that were so very important to him. Harvey was, as we would say in Yiddish, a good neshama, a good soul. He had a kind and caring heart. He had a big heart. And while I'm certain that he did not know the poet, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Emerson writes about the meaning of a life well lived in his words called success, what it means to live a successful life. And as you listen to these words, Perhaps it will strike a chord with you that Harvey really did live a life that was filled with success. Emerson writes the following, to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, and to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden path, or a redeemed social condition. To know that even one life has breathed easier because you've lived. This is to have succeeded. Harvey Horwitz succeeded. We join with the sages of our people as we declare the words, Zichron Levracha, we pray that the memory of Harvey Horwitz and the good deeds that he performed here in the land of the living, we pray that these memories will always be for you a true blessing. And to this we say, Amen.
When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey we all must take, and each must go alone. It is all a part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick at heart, go to the friends we knew and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. Praised are you, <coughs> our Lord, our God, creator of the universe, the righteous judge. God has given and now God has taken away. Still, we bless the name of God. We're taught by our tradition that as we enter into this world, there are loving hands to guide us and care for us. And so when we exit from this world, it is not done in the hands of strangers, but in the hands of those who knew us and loved us. At this time, I say the words of Ayeshav HaFar Al Ha'aretz Keshechaya Baruch Tashuv El Ha'Elohim Asher Natana. The dust returns to the earth as it was, but the spirit returns unto God who gave it. May the soul of Harvey Horowitz be bound up in the bond of life eternal. At this time, as a sign of love and respect, I invite first the members of the family who wish to place earth on the casket to come forward and do so. Anyone else who wishes to place her at this time, I invite you to come forward and do so. Thank you. 
to share with you now the words of the El Mala Rahamim, a prayer that asks God to accept Harvey's soul. El Mala Rahamim, Shochin Bamromim, Am Sein and Ochanechonat, Acha Kanfe Hashrina, the Malot Kedoshim Otorim, Kizoharakia Masirim. At me, he shmat ya kirenu, shahalach le olama began eden, te hemenu hata. Ahana the harachami must irai who be seter can a fahle olamim. Viti tsro, vi tsro rachayem at nishmato. Adonai who nahalato, vi anuach bishalom al nishkabo. Venomar. Amen. O God exalted and full of compassion. Grant perfect peace in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure to the soul of Harvey Horwitz, who has gone now to his eternal home. God of mercy, we beseech you to remember all the worthy and righteous deeds that he performed in the land of the living. May his soul be bound up in the bond of life. God is his portion. May he rest in peace. And together we say, Amen. We turn now to the words of the Kaddish. <coughs> And we recite these words together as we say, Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei Raba, v'alma divra chirate v'amlich makote, v'chayichon uv'yomechon uv'chaye dechol beit Yisrael, ba'agala uv'izman kariv v'imru amen. Yehei shemei Raba mevarach le'olam olamei almaya. Yitvarach, Vishtabach, Vietvaar, Viet Roman, Viet Nase, Viet Adar, Viet Ale, Viet Alal, Shme de Kudusha, Berihu, Laela min Kol Birhata, Vishirata, Tushbehata, Venechamata, Damiran, Vialma, Vimru, Amin, Yehe Shulama Raba, Min Shemaya, Vichayim Aleno Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amin, Ose Shalom Bim Roma, Huya se shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'yimru, amen. We pray that God who makes peace in a high place will send peace and comfort to you, the mourners, to Israel, and to all humankind. And to this we say, amen. Friends, before we depart from this spot, I've been asked to share with you that immediately following our service here, the family will receive visitors until 8 p.m. this evening. <coughs> You are invited to visit with the family at 3869 Surfside Circle in Aurora. On behalf of the family, thank you for your love and support today. As you've come here in peace, may you go forth in peace. I'm going to ask you just for the line here, allow the immediate family to return to their cars first. Out of respect, you can follow them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If you're there. <laughs> On behalf of the family, excuse me. I thank you all for being here. Are you the candidate for all of these? Uh, I was for Tim, and I was for Les. How about Barbara? Did you I think you did. Is that you did? All? Yeah. Yes. Hi. Hi. Floyd. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, yes, sweetie, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, I did two Barbara's. That was back in 19. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. Okay, let's not go to.